Could there be something inside of you that's drawing all these negative energy and negative experience towards you? When this video, I sat down with Dean Grave. He's a meditation teacher and a mental health counselor, and he helped dissect this concept. And you will be surprised, so make sure you watch the video to the end. When we reach that point in our life, when we have that awakening, as I was describing earlier, Mm -hmm. Our, it is incumbent upon us to learn to turn that same awareness that's been pointed outside of ourselves inside and become aware of what it is inside of us that we are not, uh, that we're using to respond to the life experiences that are being brought to us. Okay. And when we do that, then we are, we begin to be able to discover what it is inside of us that is attracting these negatively interpreted experiences and let them go. Uh, awareness is both the discovery tool mm -hmm. and the healing tool. Uh, all of the methodologies, there's no methodology that psychology or therapists or psychiatrists have come up with that do anything other than employ the patient's own awareness to affect healing. The okay. methodologies that are more effective focus the patient's awareness inside more effectively, more efficaciously than another method. And that's the only really distinction between them. Meditation by far is the most um, intense and it is the most productive methodology that anybody can undertake. But for someone who is um, and a great deal of chaos, then mm -hmm. it's very difficult to sit down and meditate. And that's because their energy, their vital energy is diverted with dealing with all of the um, unwanted experiences that they've not learned the lessons that were brought to them with those experiences. We get to keep that as emotional baggage and emotional okay. baggage is heavy. And so the energy that we require in order to function becomes depleted uh, significantly because we're carrying all of this heavy emotional baggage. And yeah. so the healing process is a, a, a two-step process, but the steps are not sequential, they're parallel. And one of the things that uh, uh, we have to deal with is we have to heal that emotional baggage and let that emotional baggage go, number one, Mm -hmm. That liberates the energy that we need in order to affect healing of the second step, which is becoming aware of the beliefs that we have incorporated into our mind uh, that perpetuate our attraction of these negative experiences, these negative thoughts. Yeah. That is the process of enlightenment. That is the process of consciousness evolution. And those things are the same thing. Uh, your increased enlightenment and your progression along the evolutionary path is exactly the same thing. Everyone is enlightened to the degree that they have allowed themselves to become enlightened. And so another thing that has to happen when we have this awakening is you have to assume responsibility for your healing. Uh, no okay. one can heal you. Uh, you're the only one that knows what you have incorporated into your beingness. You're the only one that knows the experiences that you've had. You're mm -hmm. the only one that knows what you're feeling. Uh, no experience comes to us with emotion on it. Uh, you and I can be sitting in a room side by side and an event happen and we'll interpret that experience completely um, uh, independently of each other. Because yeah. we'll in incorporate, we'll interpret that experience with how we are at the time. And no two people inter will in interpret the same experience exactly the same. We both may deem it to be a negative experience, but uh, there's much more beyond that just determining that it's a negative experience. So as we uh, went through life, uh, if, make sure I'm hearing you right. Um, events happen. And um uh, it's not really the events, Dean, as much as my interpretation of the events. It's exactly, exactly so. Um, you know, and I you hold need, on to those beliefs. Well, you form your beliefs, you form expectations based upon the experiences that you've had. 
Okay. And you shape this perception of self according to that, accordingly. And understand that a, a mind, you know, we're a mind, body, spirit in uh, psychology, um, psychiatry, uh, therapists. No one has a grasp of what a mind is. We talk about mental health and mental healing, but that's healing of the mind. But nobody really knows what a mind is. And a mind very simply is nothing more than a bundle of beliefs that we have incorporated into our perceptions. And so consequently, in order to heal ourselves, it's necessary to become aware of those beliefs, most of which we've gotten from family when we were small children, from friends. Mm -hmm. uh, and we've just, we've just assumed that that's the way things should be. And we incorporate those beliefs into our identity yeah. and we promote that and we interpret life according to those, those beliefs. I was just sharing with a, with a friend of mine, um, you know, I'm in a 12 step program and, and we, we do that internal work that you was talking about. We, we actually go That's inside exactly with the what 12 the 12 step. step program does. Right. And I was, and I was finishing up step 10. We continue to take personal inventory, right? Keep looking at me, mm -hmm. Dean. And what I found out to, to, to add into to what you was just saying that a lot of my belief system, Dean, not even mine. Right. You know, Where did that come down, from? Huh? Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know. Somebody snuck one in on me. I <laughs> right. So I had no choice in this. I mean, just, you know, and um, and the sad part is, Dean, you know, that that's what this recovery process is teaching me, how to really let go. And there's so yeah. much liberation Stop. and freedom in the letting go process. Yeah. Yeah. As yeah. humans, we have nothing to gain. We have lots of stuff to get rid of. Because yeah, okay. when we heal ourselves, as we're talking about healing, then what emerges is our authentic self, which is always there. It's not mm. something we have to get. It's something that we have to liberate. Yeah. But it's buried beneath, that's what I found out, all that stuff, mm -hmm. all those character defects. Right. All those belief systems I use to survive. Um, right. Yeah. 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 And, and then, you didn't you didn't sit down and make a checklist of everyone and say, well, this sounds good because of this, this, and this. Yeah, I'll incorporate that belief. You just yeah. what well, you just woke up one day and it was there because society or family or friends or whoever mm -hmm. gave it to you and you just appeared. It, you didn't decide to take it on. It just became part of your perception of self. Right. And the sad part, Dean, this is the sad part. Some beliefs, some perspectives that's still causing me pain. Mm -hmm. Even though I know, Dean, that it's, it's not healthy. Right? It's, a, it's a process. So, right. I refuse it's to let some of them go. Yeah, well, I, well, me too. I mean, we're we're stubborn. Once right. we get one in there, some of them are hard to get out. But when you when you yeah. when you learn to develop that awareness, and that's why you go through the twelve step program over and over and over, because each time, if you're truly working the steps, then you're going deeper, and you're going deeper to find yeah. those beliefs that are underlying beliefs that you don't know how they got there, but they still cause you pain, stress. Pain yeah. and suffering. That is stress. When we experience uh, something that we don't like, that's stress because it doesn't meet mm -hmm. our expectations from those beliefs that we've incorporated. But that's why stress is our friend. Stress is our teacher. When we okay. have an experience that presents us with that interpretation of stress, that's the time to invert that awareness and become aware. I say, why? Why is that causing me that negative feeling? Mm -hmm. And invariably, it's going to believe, be a belief that we've cemented into our mind yeah. about how we perceive things should be. Those beliefs, those beliefs. And, and here's the thing, too, about those beliefs. A lot of them was not based in reality. Hmm. No, none of them are. Right. Yeah, none of them are. None of them are. And, yeah. So what we're doing, what we're doing is we're exploring ourselves which is everyone's purpose in life. There's no one that has a purpose other than exploring themselves. We all have different missions, mm -hmm. but 
the purpose is exactly the same. And we were before we get off the topic of the, the 12 steps, you can divide the 12 steps into uh, groups of three. Okay. And the first three steps are doing that um, awakening and assuming responsibility for your own healing. The next three steps are actually the healing part. When you're doing your self inventory and, in in uh, um, you know, sharing it with someone else and you're breaking down those walls of uh, those fears that you have about things that you've done in your life. Yeah. And almost invariably, whoever you share that information with it. Yeah. So what, you know, I've done worse than that or, you know, uh, yeah. no big deal. Everybody, you know, everybody screws up. It's not how you screw up. It's how you recover from it. Okay. That's good. That's yeah. good. And so the, in the next three steps and the last, the, the last three steps, steps particularly is when you're becoming a teacher, you're teaching others about what you have learned by your going through the process up to that point. Okay. And when you really learn is when you become a teacher because you have to know the answers for someone else and they're yeah. going to ask you hard questions that you would not have thought of, or your sponsor would not have thought of on their own. Mm -hmm. And so you have to begin to apply all of those things that you've learned to another person to guide them in their healing. Yeah. And that that's why those last three steps are so important okay. is to allow you to go ever deeper into yourself in order to heal even more significantly. Yeah. And you have to learn and remember, you know, when you get to those last three, that when you're dealing with somebody in the first stage or who haven't even just, who haven't even started the 12 step process. And this is this something I have to do. I have to remember I was once there. Yeah. 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 And, 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 and puts it into perspective for you. Yeah. And, and, it, and it teach me how to practice patience as you was talking about. <laughs> yes. You, you got to have patience, you know, because right. you know, you know, the solution and, and, and I know the solution. I'm a life coach too, Dean. And one thing about it is that I can hear them because I've done the work on me. Right. I can hear the self-deception. I can hear the denial, but I have to coach them so they can see it, you know? Right. Right. Uh, I, I left a meeting this morning and I, and I said the two spiritual awakenings that I had when I first came to the 12 step program, one, I found out Dean, that drugs wasn't my problem. Mm -hmm. It's not. <laughs> that, that woke me up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, but the second one I got, when I, I began to do the step work and I began to find out I'm not who I think I was. That is the whole process burning. Just yeah. uh, exploring ourselves and learning who we really are. And the interesting thing about it is when you start letting go of those beliefs and throwing those beliefs out that they, you weren't even aware that were there, then that leaves a void and happiness fills that void. It's just like water rushing into an empty space. Yeah. Happiness fills the void when you get rid of those beliefs that were attracting those negative thoughts. Mm -hmm. And so your measure of how you're doing is how happy you, you are. If you're getting happier incrementally through this process, mm -hmm. then you're having success. Yeah. 